Here's what we sound like with the new water pump. Old water pump. As you can tell, this one's making kind of a noise. New water pump. Old water pump. New water pump. Big difference. Ryan's Mobile One. We're working on a 2007 Toyota Yaris. You can always tell the year of your car if you just look at the little emissions tag. It'll give you both the engine size. This one's a 1.5. It'll say like test group or something. And then what model year it complies to emission standards for. As you can tell, this one's making kind of a noise. And it sounds like it's coming from where the timing chain is to me. It might be from the alternator, but I really don't think so. It sounds like it's like right in here. Could be valve train, I don't know. This thing doesn't have too much blow by. I might be able to get a peek at something through here, but usually there's an oil bath full. Yeah, it's blowing pretty hard. This engine's pretty worn. One of the things to look at when you buy a car is see how much air is blowing past the piston rings and out through the valve cover. Uh, pulling the cap off will reveal that pretty quick. Another thing is to look for that reddish color. That's bad. That means it hasn't had the oil changes it should have. This one probably didn't get a lot of oil changes in its early life, and then the second owner picked up the slack. You can see where there's stains and the cracks and stuff, but it looks like it's better now than it's been in the past. So the way I usually approach a noise like this is I do steps. The first thing I do, and it works most of the time, I call it the cobra. You ever see a cobra? They like move their head side to side and they use their pits to sense heat or whatever to strike. Snake charmers take advantage of this with a flute. They do side to side, it looks like they're dancing. But when you move side to side, it's almost like depth perception. The distance between your ears and the noise, you can kind of triangulate it. Your brain just does that on its own. So I do that, if that doesn't work, I get out a stethoscope. This is a special stethoscope for cars. Um, I put it on the sides of the injectors because they were suspect. There's a little shelf on the side of them. So I put it on that, I checked across there. I put it on the alternator casing. I put it on the oil valve for the timing. But anyway, I just try different points on the motor and try to isolate it down to individual components. And if that doesn't work, then I start tearing into stuff. I mean, obviously, I pulled the idiot hood off and put it over there. Um, but I think it's either going to be the alternator or water pump. I'm not positive, so I'm going to pull the belt off and then spin those pulleys independently. So we've got the belt removed. It's sitting on the floor. And the noise is gone. Hooray! So that narrows it down to something in here. Now bear in mind we're running without an alternator and without a water pump, so you don't want to do this for a long period of time. Most cars from cold can run anywhere from three minutes to eight minutes without the belt being on, without the water pump. After a while the coolant can't dissipate the heat so well and you get in trouble. Better air on the safe side is what I'm telling you. So when we spin the alternator, it sounds pretty normal, runs pretty normal. When we spin the water pump, it sounds really dry. It's got kind of a dry roll to it. So in this case, the noise is the water pump. So to get the belt off, this is a 12 millimeter bolt. You just gotta back this off. You'll see that there's a slide track that it rides on. There's a pivot bolt that's at the bottom. You can see there's a 14 millimeter bolt that's a pivot at the bottom. So the best way to get to that is to get a long handled ratchet like this. That 14 millimeter bolt's a little thicker than most, it's a little bit hard to crack. But if you have a handle that can bend like that, it helps. Just really hold firmly against that. You don't want to push the release button on the socket. You do want to hold it straight with the bolt because if you get a little crooked you can round the, the head of the bolt. You don't want to do that. That just makes it a headache. Then you have to buy a special socket that fits on it. And then it's easier to just do it right the first time. So left hand's on this, right hand's on the end of the handle, crack. And then just turn it out a little ways and you'll be able to move the alternator pretty freely. You can see how it goes in and out like that. And then as close as you are to having the alternator out, at this point it's best to just pull the alternator. You can leave your wires connected, but you got to undo this. Um, it's a good idea to disconnect your negative battery terminal right here. If you loosen this and then pull this up and off, then you can touch pretty much anything and not get in trouble. Otherwise, this is the guy that you'd get in trouble with. It's the little post for the positive cable. If that touches anything negative, it can arc. This is the place where the bolt goes through. The bracket for the air conditioning is in the way. 
just a little 10 millimeter bolt nuisance uh, but you can slide this down the line or flip it up or whatever that enables you to get this bolt to come out here and across without having to undo the engine mount so getting this off the way that I do these is I put a pry bar in here I turn it clockwise so as I loosen these counterclockwise it binds on it because as it tries to twist the pry bar it actually locks it up so you can crack them free get them free and then I really like these little ratcheting box wrenches like these gear wrenches especially the stubby ones you use a metric one uh, it's 10 millimeter on the back side of here to pull the three bolts that hold the pulley on and like I say once you get the alternator out of here it's so much easier the hardest part about pulling the alternator is it's got this little slide nut it's kind of a press fit so you have to rock it side to side to get this to come off a little bit because otherwise it's pressed so tight and it's stuck and rusted that it can't slide off uh, once you get that off and out of the way getting the pulley off is not such a big deal once you get the pulley off then the rest of the bolts aren't such a big deal and this little bracket you can put it up like here but I would recommend tightening it down so that it holds in there otherwise you get this the whole time you're working and filming not the end of the world but it's annoying you want to drain the coolant before you get too far you can see all my pans are used up so I'm just using ice cream buckets They're so handy don't throw those away going underneath the Yaris you can see a little drain cock the white wing nut and then there's a nipple there uh, the white sheet metal right here is in the way you can grab it with some channel locks and pull it back and they'll actually help you to get a hose on it'll hold the hose too you just back off that nut let's get under there remember that little lip of metal that I bent down there this is what I used just these little skinny nose things just get them right in there and just just like that but that's the drain cock right there you just back off that little wing nut you can see where I bent down the sheet metal so that things actually work the way they're supposed to no harm no foul doesn't hurt anything to do that just let her drain it won't drain very fast unless you open the radiator cap and pull it the rest of the way off it's like taking your finger off the end of a soda straw that's got pop in it pull it off and it vents better there's not a ton of coolant in this thing so I've got the bolts all pulled out he's a little ratcheting 10 millimeter just crank them a few times turn it crank it turn it crank it when I say turn it I mean rotate it to the next one uh, then you can pull this off just put two fingers one on each side and voila you've got all kinds of access to get your water pump out the bolts on this are also 10 millimeter you've got a nut down here bolt 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 and another one down the back side so here's what that petcock looks like just with the lithaline sticking down the hose size, this is just transmission cooler line, it's a 5 16 This is pretty good fit, it holds on pretty snug. So with a pig mat and some ice cream buckets in place, I'm going to crack these bolts loose. And as I do, you'll see that it starts to leak around the sides. That's normal. So there's a little bit of a uh, hill to get over with the coolant between the thermostat and the radiator. And there's a little spillway through that, so it'll just kind of drip on you. So you drain as much as you can from the radiator and then prepare yourself because it's going to drip from the water pump. It's always a little bit of a mess. Gosh dang it, but what do you do? You replace the water pump. Getting the water pump out isn't too hard in terms of bolts, but when you go to pull the pump itself out, you'll find that it just hangs up and doesn't come out for anything unless you get it exactly straight. And if you get it exactly straight, it barely slides out. There's not a millimeter to spare, but it will come out okay for you. You see how much coolant we took on these two buckets? And they did most of the work. Pig mat got a little bit of a workout. There you go, pig mat. I'll leave a link for the pig mat for the short stubby wrenches. And then I gotta tell you, I cheated for a lot of this job by using this impact. It's a little bit more expensive, but this is one of those things that makes you excited to go work on your car instead of dreading it. It's awesome. It's not super powerful in that it's 12 volt, but when you go to hit a bolt, if you're spinning, a lot of times like these little 10 millimeter ones, I abuse the crap out of this, but it's worth it. I get spinning, put a socket on it, and just bam, it just hits it. That inertia and momentum, it takes it. I mean, even though it's not an air compressor and an air hose and a big heavy duty tool that you just put it on, it still gets the job done, and you're not dragging the hose everywhere. I love this thing. 
Again, links in the description and pinned in the top comment. There wasn't a whole lot of leaking from here, and part of that is because this coolant coagulates. Coagulate is freeze in Spanish, coagulante. But basically it heals, it's just like a scab or something. You can see where the coolant was leaking from this water pump from that weep hole. That weep hole is to protect the bearing. So you've got liquid on this side, it's great, be wet, keep cool, whatever. And then you have a sealed bearing on this side. If this liquid gets to the bearing, it rusts out and ruins it. So there's a seal between the two. When that seal goes bad, there's an exit point at the bottom of the water pump to let the coolant out so it doesn't get to the bearing. It'll overheat your car, but it'll also make a puddle and smell and whatever else to indicate that you got a problem. But if it coagulates and then goes right past the hole to the bearing, then you get what we had here in this case. The coolant that came out of this is that pink stuff. And yeah, it coagulates great. It does a good job. Toyota loves it. And for good reason. It lasts a long time. At this point in the game, when you're getting the new parts, it's a good idea to take a look at your belt. If you have a lot, see you got a few little shiny spots. Those are rocks or gravel or something. Not a big deal. Uh, look for cracks. Look for big rocks. You can see a little bit of cracking, but it's so micro, it's just negligible. This belt's practically new. Pull the gasket off. I love when they do studs like these. They make it so much easier to put a gasket on there. So I usually doctor my gasket up with a little Permatex right stuff. It looks like you're going to caulk your house or something. But I go through this stuff. I use it like Windex in the Big Fat Greek Wedding movie. But anyway, I'll just go around this. This basically glues the gasket to the uh, engine side timing cover. And it also glues the gasket to the water pump. And this stuff's like chewy. It's like tire rubber. I feel bad for the next guy that's got to take it off, but mine will never freaking leak. The water pump will leak long before this leaks. Two more quick trips and I'll shut up and get on with putting this in. Uh, when I do these, you don't know how this goes. You don't know if it's this way or this way or what the deal is. So what I do is I line it up, look for the biggest gap. The biggest gap's right here. So I do the same thing with this. The biggest gap between the bolt holes or span is right here. So I could have put it on, it won't fit. So I flip it over. Stick it on like that and surprise all the holes line up. That's a good thing to know when you've got some silicone drying. Sorry for the camera drift there, this is hard. So everything's laid out, so I'll do a little bead around here, a little, little squib around the bolt holes, just real thin, just enough to stick. And then once this is on there, I'll put another layer on this top. This is sticky enough, it has enough viscosity, it'll actually kind of hold that in place. Or you can kind of stipple it around, whichever you choose. Nothing artsy fartsy, just laying it down. It seals around the circle of the impeller, and then you just do little circles here. And I kind of link it together. I don't know why. And I'll take my pinky and smear it like this. When we're kids, we play the floor is hot lava. When we're grown ups, we play my pinky is a marker. We just mark, mark the whole thing. Once you do that, putting the gasket on, it just really it doesn't want to slide or go anywhere. And that way you don't have to fight finding bolt holes. Once you've lined it up, you just kind of push it on there. You just kind of rotate it on the bearing. It's like a Bob Ross painting. There's no right and wrong way to do this. This is just how I do it. And we're back to the beginning. And then we'll go through and just mark that the same way we did to begin with and put it on. And technically we wouldn't even need to use a gasket. But there's something about that tough material uh, between what I do on each side of the gasket and the gasket that just works magic to not leak. Plus, finger painting's fun. So the longest run here is between here and here. So you need to make sure that your water pump has the longest run like that. So the ear that sticks up the highest or farthest is going to be there. And you've got the little square thing pointing down to the front. Should look something like this. This is why I love this thing. I already got the two nuts here and here. You want to tighten it down in an opposite pattern or star pattern. So you just buzz them down. Hit the top one. Hit this guy. That way you don't get tendonitis or carpal tunnel or something getting these things in. So nice. So you want to approach putting the pulley on with a little bit of respect. You can see I've got that on there. You can see from the back side in person when you have enough light where the bolt hole is and where it is in the pulley. So you just line it up with the witness mark or the mark that was made by dirt getting everywhere but what the actual triangle of the pump was. You get that first one in there, it's a little tricky because it's flopping around on you, but you take your index finger and your thumb of your right hand so that they can slip down the side like this, and you use your middle finger to line up where the hole is, 
There's a lot of holes, so you got to feel for where the little hole is. There's a little hole. And then I take the bolt and I just rub it on the surface of the pulley until I feel it click in. And then I hunt around a little bit until I feel it click in the next hole. And then I just twist it in there by hand. Second bolt, it's the same way. Third bolt, same way. Just hunt it in there. And you can kind of feel around by braille where it is. There it is. When you put the first one in, don't tighten it all the way down or else it'll make it hard to line up the other ones. So I've got the bolt started in there. It takes a little time on the first one, so be patient. Go slow. Just kind of be aware. Be mindful. Be in the moment. Don't be thinking about something else while you're doing it. You'll have a much better experience with it. Life in general is that way. You've heard this saying, The past is history. The future is a mystery and uh, right now is a gift that's why they call it the present so i sacrifice some of that in a way when i make these videos because i'm thinking about my angles thinking about lighting i'm thinking about getting the thing done the storyline so i kind of give that up and i miss it and i really understand the value of that you know as i make these videos but it's made up to me when people are thankful for the video that i made i say thank you in the comments or they're excited you know, like they do something that was intimidating to them, and then they get that feeling of efficacy, which is like a feeling like, I can do this. So again, when I go to put this on, I'll put a pry bar in there. It's so much easier with the alternator out. But as I tighten it down, it's going to bind. So it's going to want to rotate this way. So as I do that, say I'm going to pick this spot as a spot to bind, then I'll need to make sure that I have the pry bar like this. So that as I twist, it'll bind on it. So a counterclockwise one, because the pulley's moving clockwise. So here's a tip for the advanced portion of the aerobics class. This is like the high pace stuff. If you put this bolt into this uh, slider nut and put it in almost all the way, like a millimeter or two, that's all you need to get this moved over so that you can line the bolt up easily. So that it doesn't uh, take a lot of fight and wiggling to get back on. But you can take the hammer hold this in your hands so you're not like breaking your intake manifold or something whatever it's sitting on so this is in one hand hammers in the other and just whack it until that uh, surface of the bolt meets the alternator and then that'll make it much easier on the install special side note warning caution eye protection gloves whatever kind of stuff don't break something that the alternator sitting on forces will translate through the alternator Make sure that's like something like a wood block on your bench or something that's not going to break. Ta-da! <laughs> I cheated. You have to make room so that that bolt can clear because if you have it like this, you're just hammering and smacking the bolt into the threads. That's bad. Hang it over a vise. Now that's good. So when I go to pour this back in, you can see that there's a little bit of contamination that gets in there. The same size basically of what contaminates paint. It's about the same standard. So I use a paint funnel filter and I use this handy Lyle uh, bucket. I'll leave a link in the description for that. But this way you're recycling your antifreeze. You're not wasting it. Be sure to test it with a bulb tester. I can leave a description link for that too if you want. Uh, they're cheap. You can find them most anywhere. Ta-da! This way you don't have to spend more money on coolant and you don't have to dispose of it, contaminate the environment, etc, etc. So we're going to get this filled up. And then I use my uh, universal cooling system tester. You know, back when I got this, Mac was the one to get. They are the only ones that had it. Now there's a bunch of other ones. Again, link in the description. I make it easy for you. You're welcome. Here's what the new water pump sounds like. Assuming I don't whack my finger on something. It's pretty quiet. Almost no noise at all. Here's the old one. Here's the new one. Old one. New one. Much better. So I've got my tester hooked up. I've got it pumped up. You can see where the needle is. It's about 108 kilopascals or 1.1 atmospheres. And I get that from the cap. You see where it says 108 kilopascals or 1.1 atmospheres. Atmospheric pressure is 14.7. Multiply 1.1 times 14.7 and you come up with something on the order of about 16 psi. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like and subscribe. Bonus footage at the end.